Hamilton, Athens. We're going to try that one more time. Hello, Ted Athens! The world is broken, but I have come to the conclusion that we can fix it. My name is Maysoon Zayed, and 11 months ago, I did my first TED Talk ever at the TED Women's Conference in San Francisco. I had no idea when I stepped on that stage that my words would be read, heard, and seen by millions across the globe. Since doing that talk, one question keeps coming up. How can you be so happy when the world is so broken and you have everything going against you? I'd like to take an opportunity to answer that question because I believe that the first step to fixing this broken world is fixing yourself. One, <laughs> oh, you like me now, but in about five minutes, you're gonna be like, no. okay. <laughs> One of the keys to being happy is realizing that nobody is happy all of the time. Life is about ups and downs, and we have to learn how to deal with the downs the same way that we enjoy the ups. Which brings me to my first piece of advice you don't want to hear. Get over it. <laughs> or in the immortal words of Elsa from Disney, let it go. I know so many people who torture themselves because their body betrayed them, or their families abused them, or the love of their life left them. And the advice I give them is, get over it. Don't let your physical body or the treatment of others define you. Only you get to define you. Create the person that you want to be and be that person. You cannot force people to clap for you. So block them and cheer for yourself. If you are your number one fan, others will join in the fun. My mantra is, you can do it. Yes, you can, can. But sometimes getting over it is impossible. And there is nothing wrong with admitting when we need help. In fact, one of the most powerful things that you can do is say, I can't. And there is nothing wrong with getting by with a little help from our friends or trained professionals. But remember one thing, you can't say can't unless you try. The next question I get most often is parents of children with cerebral palsy who ask me, Maysoon, I want to teach my child to walk, but I'm afraid that if I do, they'll fall. And I have to remind these parents that no human being in the world has ever learned to walk without falling on its booty multiple times. Hell, I fell at the Acropolis today. No, I did, really. <laughs> you have to allow your children to fall. And this doesn't just apply to walking, it applies to life in general. Without failure, children can never learn how to succeed. And no matter how much you try to protect them, no matter what you do to shield them from pain, they have to learn how to walk on their own. So all you can do is make them the best people they can be. And for every one of you out there who has a child, make sure that you are not raising an internet troll. <laughs> Social media has become a permanent part of our broken world. And my number one rule for social media is exactly the same as my number one rule for relationships in real life. Do not hang out with mean people. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, cut fun sponges out. 
I know that this is easier said than done, but at the age of three, I decided not to hang out with mean people. This drove my parents crazy because as a toddler, I had no free will. So even when I didn't want to go to the house of people I loathe, I had to. And my mother had a rule. And I believe that this rule also applies to the real world the same way it applies online. If you have nothing nice to say, scream it in a mirror, but don't you dare say it to that person. <laughs> We are a society who goes online with the desire to tear down other people. I have been called fat. I have been called retarded. I have been threatened with violence. We need to raise a society that realizes that even if you can't be seen, it is not okay to be mean. So don't hang out with mean people, but more importantly, don't be that person. But let's be honest, there's a difference between hate and constructive criticism. And constructive criticism is great. We need to be able to self-criticize as well as share as our, our opinions with others. But if you're trying to be helpful, maybe wait for your friend to ask your opinion before telling them that their haircut makes them look like a donkey. Not everyone's gonna like you. And part of being happy is understanding that it's okay if not everybody likes you. If an ignorant, hateful bigot hates me, I win. I win. After doing my TED Talk, I had several fans that followed me on Twitter and Facebook, and they became extremely disappointed when they heard about my dirty little obsession with equal rights. Yeah, I know, it's bad. I like equal rights. A lot of people say that they want equality, but what they mean is they want equality for me, not equality for them. And when I believe in equal rights, I mean I believe in equal rights for all. I'm a one-stater. A one-stater is someone who believes that Palestine and Israel should be one big, happy, secular state. <laughs> I grew up in the United States of America, and I was raised in New Jersey, and where I grew up, we treated everyone equally, regardless of gender, faith, race, ability. When I was young, sexual orientation was still in the closet, but overall, we all got along. So nobody can ever convince me that the United States of America would have been better had whites and blacks stayed separate but unequal. The reality is this. Palestinians and Israelis already coexist. One group has human rights, the other lacks it. I am often accused of neglecting to admit that this story has two sides. I do know that there are two sides. I have never forgotten that there are two sides. But the two sides are the oppressed and the oppressor. I do not believe that you can separate these Semites. When I suggest one state, people look at me and say, but having one state will deny the Jewish people the right to a state based on their faith. And what I say is this, a secular state does not deny Jewish people a right to their identity or a right to security. A single state with equal rights enhances all of those rights. The reality is this, every single day, thousands of Palestinians cross the separation barrier to work illegally in Israel. If we are fit to work for you, then we are fit to have equal rights. <laughs> Others say that granting equality to the Palestinians and allowing the refugees a right of return will deny Israel its right to self-determination. 
I looked up the term self-determination, and as far as I can tell, equality does not infringe upon that in any way. And if your right to self-determination requires that you deny the lion's share of the indigenous people human rights, then that is not a universally recognized right. I believe that the only just solution is to tear down that wall and give every person living their equality, regardless of faith, ethnicity, gender, ability, and because it's almost 2015, sexual orientation too. Then it could be a true beacon unto nations on, instead of what it is right now. The current state has hosted three massacres in the past five years. We can do better, and the Holy Land is where we start. Come on. Go for it with me. It's equality. You got to love equality. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I am not the only one. I believe that dream, yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a comedian taking a risk right now, and I love you so much, Grace, for letting me. So applause for you. Thank you. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one, and I believe that dreaming big may be the one thing that can fix this broken world. So I ask every single one of you in this audience, dream big, have no fear. And if your dream turns into a nightmare, let it go and find another dream. <laughs> my, final, my final piece of advice is, my final piece of advice for a happy life is, neither a borrower or borrower be. Greece, I know you feel me. <laughs> Some debt is unavoidable. So when you can avoid it, avoid it like the plague. When I went to Arizona State University, I applied for about 100 credit cards. Because when I did, they gave me free prizes. So I got like a Frisbee and a Slinky, and I got one of those squishy stress balls, and then I got $24,000 in debt. Paying off that debt was physically and emotionally draining. I squished that stress ball into a pancake. But when I was finally debt free, I raised my fist in the air and I said, never again. So now on payday, what I do is I pay all of my bills, I set aside whatever I can in savings, and only then, if I have money left over, will I do something frivolous. You can't always get what you want, so get what you need. Before making a purchase, ask yourself, is this worth my peace of mind? And if it's not, put it down and let it go. <laughs> I often joke that I'm the most oppressed person in the world, but the reality is I am privileged, and I check my privilege every single day, and so should you. The world is broken, but I believe we can fix it by saying no. Say no to violence against women, an epidemic that needs to end and is global. Say no to the massacre of children and never believe that there is any excuse for targeting unarmed civilians. Say no to bullying online and yes to posting pictures of cats doing silly things. and say no to being silenced. Your voice is your weapon against inequality. Let it be heard. My name is Maysoon Zayed, and if I can, can, you can, can. Thank you, TEDx, Athens, Kale Nichte.